so much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media Interview, sponsored by 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and recorded live from the world's new new media capital and hometown of Exine Cervanka of X, St. Petersburg, Florida. So, Joey Ramone wasn't really Joey Ramone. And most people know that the Ramones name was for the stage, although few, few sought out and became their stage persona more completely than the former Jeffrey Hyman, a spindly trouble boy from Queens. Now, if you're a Ramones fan or just fascinated with stories of familial dysfunction, you're going to find the new book, I Slept with Joey Ramone, an irresistible attraction. The story was written by Joey's younger brother, Mitchell Hyman, a.k.a. Mickey Lee, with help from Legs McNeil a longtime friend of both brothers and the author of the classic music history, Please Kill Me, The Uncensored History of Punk. Uh, here's a little reminder of what the Ramones sound like. Like McNeil, today making his second appearance on Mr. Media, got to know Joey and Mickey in the late 70s when he and John Holmstrom co-founded the legendary Punk magazine. I got to know Legs a little bit through his later contributions to Spin Magazine. His writing always comes with a twist because he's never dull. Legs, welcome back to Mr. Media. Mr. Media, how are you? <laughs> All right, my friend, you know, how are this you? Is, Have... This is actually my third time on your show. Is it your third Yes, because when uh, Bob Gruen had his book of uh, photos uh, on the New York Dolls, you had me on. Oh, my God, I completely forgot. I'm so sorry. Folks, we have our second three-timer here. <laughs> yes. Wow. Well, welcome back and back again. I, I just I just want to keep coming back and back and back and, and just never stop calling Mr. Media. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the nice thing is... Because that, I love you so much, Mr. Media. Oh, you, you're such a good guy. I, you know, and the thing is, you're one of those people I'd have have come on uh, without a new book, because I know it's always fun to talk, and you've always got some interesting stories to tell. <laughs> well, hopefully so, I do. Hopefully. Well, well, we'll find out in a few minutes. Yeah. Who knows? The, the invitation could be stricken at any time. <laughs> um, just like, like just Kathy, Lee, Kathy Griffin on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> has she has she been kicked off for good now? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, according to AOL this morning. Uh, you know, I, sometimes I think they just build that up. I mean, is it the F word? It's like big deal. It's late night cable. Who cares? Yeah. Well. Well. I. I yeah. Never mind. <laughs> well, no, I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, look, this this book, um, I slept with Joey Ramone, which refers to Mickey, of course, not you that I know of. Well, I, I actually did. I slept. I ended up sleeping with you because we would pass out every night at Arturo's watching TV. <laughs> Remember, at that time, we had, we had a <laughs> small me. black and white TV, and we'd watch the two Mary Tyler Moores. They're back to back. I think at two, mm -hmm. two and two thirty. And then at 3 o'clock, the Joe Franklin show came on, and then the TV signed off at 4. So we would pass out in a big box of pizza. So so the title refers to both of you? Well, not really. I wanted to call it um, Waiting for Joey Ramone, you know, after the uh, Samuel Beckett Waiting for Godot. But uh, Mickey struck that down. No, uh, well. You know, and I think, it was, I think my, my title was a little too pretentious. Well, then that wouldn't fit the Ramones at all, would it? No. <laughs> so I'm glad Mickey struck it down. Well, the book took years to finish. What 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 actually took so long to get it done? Well, we we both had prior commitments. I had to finish the other Hollywood, the uncensored oral history of the porn film industry, um, and Mickey had you know he kept having to do uh, the um, the Joey Ramone birthday bash every year and and other stuff. You know, I mean he he runs the you know the the the, the Ramones uh, production or whatever it is the holding company with Linda um, Cummings John Cummings is ex uh, widow I'm not ex wife widow sorry sorry Linda hmm. I didn't realize he was doing that that's in interesting yeah so um, and then his mom died and you know he just had a really rough time so um, that that's what took up you know it was mostly scheduling. Problems. And what kind of reception has he 
personally gotten to writing a book about his more famous brother? Well, I think everybody who reads the book really likes it. Um, there's a there's a, a cadre of of, of naysayers on uh, Amazon who to say that Mickey's still riding on Joey's coattails, and you know they 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 say all the stupid stuff, and it's obviously obvious they haven't read the book, you know. Yeah. You know, well, I, I mean, I don't I don't think Mickey portrays himself any any better than he does anyone else. You know, I mean, he you know it's, he's at po- points you know he's a really loving great brother, and at other point, other points he's a jerk, just like anyone is. You know, that's then that's what we wanted to do. You know, get both sides of the story and get you know get get try to do a really balanced uh, book. You know. Well, and let me ask you about that, because, I mean, that was the thing. It started striking me as I – and I read the book um, on vacation the last two weeks. And uh, What did you think? We, I, I enjoyed the book. I thought it was very compelling. I was also surprised to hear that my 13-year-old daughter, who doesn't know the Ramones from a hole in the ground, started reading the book and, and made conversation with me about it, which I found interesting. Uh, and she doesn't she know anything did? about the music. Yeah, it was, it was What did she say? Well, she's read, I guess, the first half a dozen chapters, and she just thought – it was a, just a very interesting um, relationship between these two brothers, who she doesn't know from Adam. Right. And she doesn't have she doesn't have brothers or sisters, so she found it very interesting, and she wants uh, she wants me to give the book back to her so she can keep reading. So. Oh, that's cool. I thought, yeah, I thought that was really uh, different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. most people are going to be drawn to it because they know something about the Ramones. There's a lot of you know, there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of tragic history there. But um, I mean, the thing that struck me is I got to I guess the last third of the book. Um, or maybe it's a little later, as, as Joey, uh, Joey's dealing with a lot of health issues and the issue of um, uh, uh, the beer company uh, licensing a Ramon song. Um, up until that point, it seemed like Mickey portrays himself as the ever-loving brother and son and the caretaker for the family and the strong, balanced person in the family. Um, but then once the, the issue of the, 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 the song for the, for the beer commercial comes up, it seems like we see him a little differently. Um, well, I and, think and that's I'll, because, because all along he's been writing songs with Joey and working with Joey, and he, he was never credited. The only time he was actually credited was on a song called Go Home Man that he wrote with Dee Dee that, that uh, they put out in England uh, on the B side of, of, of some record. But I, I think it was a years and years of uh, uh, frustration, you know, that came to head with the uh, Bud Light fight night. That, that, that was the Bud Light um, used uh, Blitzkrieg Bop in one of their songs. I, I, I don't think he even wanted money. I think he just wanted acknowledgement that he'd sang on the song, you know, that he had actually been there in the studio singing on in harmonizing with Joey, on, you know, because their voices are almost identical. You know, it's kind of like... Uh, the Beach Boys, you know, with with uh, Carl and and and, uh, and Brian Wilson harmonizing with each other, you know. So I think I think that's the, and and maybe maybe we made a mistake by not showing it, but you kind of see it happening, you know. Yeah, well, that was the thing. I mean, he he was Mickey was around the uh, music industry really as long as Joey was because. They, had, they shared the same interests. That's how they got involved, and you know. Well, he, he, longer actually, because he was in a band with John before right. Joey before was, in a, you know, was before Joey started calling himself Jeff Starship and was singing in Sniper, you know. So, um, but why did he not get all, for all those years? Get and uh, uh, when I say get, I mean understand or take steps to to only do work that he would be credited for, and and if he wasn't going to be credited as as it seemed to be the case time after time. Why did he continue? Was it just, I love my brother so much? I mean, his brother's a recording artist, and, and Mickey's basically selling pot to make a living. Why would he con- keep, con- that's the thing that confused me as I got laid into the book. Um, I, you'd have to ask Mickey that. I mean, he felt, uh, you know, like Joey calls up and says, oh, c- come on over and, you know, help me put some put some music down. You know, it, it wasn't like this, we're now we're going to write a song, you know. It was like, do you have any licks? And you turn on the tape recorder, and you know, um, Mickey starts strike. You know, the the way the Ramones wrote songs. I mean, I watched Dee Dee and Joey in Arturo's Loft. You know, it wasn't. 
it wasn't a big, real big deal until the song came to fruition, you know? But the first two or three times you do that, it's your brother. I understand you love your brother. You want to be part of this thing. But after you don't get acknowledged the first couple times, whether it be you don't get paid, you don't get credited, you don't get whatever it is you need to come out of it, why do you keep doing it? Uh, and then when you realize that um, that you're not going to get credited and then the, the, the beer commercial comes out with the Blitzkrieg Bob, um, what makes you think that anything is going to be different? And I'm sorry, I'm, I, uh, you're right. I mean, I'd love to ask that of Mickey, but that was the that was the thing that confused me in the book. I just felt like, am I missing something here? Did he... Did something happen earlier? Well, and- well, you, you do a song and you go on. You know, I, I remember, you know, the Ramones were always, you know, everybody was always writing songs and handing them in. They would either go on later albums. I mean, stuff that Joey wrote very early on didn't come out until uh, Road to Ruin. And so you you got to remember that it, it, it it's a lot of time goes by in between the time you write the song, it says, oh, yeah, I'll give you credit, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that only happened a couple times before Mickey said, and then the Bud Light fight came, mm-hmm. you know? Were you aware, because uh, you knew them both, you go back all the way, uh, yeah. were, were you aware that, that, that Mickey had these kind of issues before you got involved with the book? Oh, of course. Oh, of course. Okay. I, well, Mickey and I had a, a very similar relationship to Joey. And I think he picked me as his, his co-writer because they said, you've never written a book before. You need someone else to write it with you. I think he picked me because we did have a similar relationship to Joey, and he didn't have to go and explain everything, you know? Right. Uh, and that I understood that Joey really was a prisoner to his mental illness. And once Johnny, um, quote, stole, unquote, Linda from Joey, Joey's paranoia really kicked in. And um, it, it was hard. And and most people know Joey as this fun-loving, great guy who'd stop and talk to anyone and sign anything and then, you know, give his fans 100%. But there was also another Joey Ramone, and that's what we wanted to capture in this book. Well, and along that lines, what, if anything, did you learn about Joey in working on this book that even you didn't know before? Well, I didn't know that he was a great ice skater. I didn't know that he, he liked <laughs> to, catch, to, catch, to catch butterflies. I mean, the whole the whole uh, beginning of the book of them growing up, I think, is great because you can also hear the rock and roll behind it. You can hear them singing doo-wop at mm-hmm. night when they're lying in bed and it's echoing off the, the buildings and, you know, they're going to see the Beach Boys and the Alan Freed shows and they're listening to Phil Spector produce stuff and... You know, there you can really hear the. I mean, I think, I think the first single they bought was Leslie Gore's "It's My Party and I'll Cry If I Want To." You know, I mean, just just I just how much they loved rock and roll. You know, and how much they loved all aspects of it. You know, well, so the Spectre stuff was interesting because, of course, we saw that that personality played out more publicly later. Uh, but that was yeah. that was real interesting. There was some good good real good material there. Yeah, poor Phil. Yeah, um, and poor, poor the girl that he uh, shot. Yeah. Now, were there were there uh, stories that you remembered in in working on this over the years that uh, you hadn't told before simply because you forgot? I mean, you know, you mentioned falling down drunk in places with Joey. Uh, I imagine there's a lot. You had a lot of experiences that had not come up in other material. Oh, yeah, and a lot of it didn't make it into the book because it really wasn't my story. I was just there to add, you know, um, to reinforce different points and, and things like that, you know. So, um, and, and also to get, you know, good quotes, someone to to to, um, to reinforce what Mickey, the point, uh, a point Mickey was trying to make. So, and yeah, point a lot out of, I'm you, sorry? You are, you are a character in the book. I mean, you, you that was... That was kind of interesting too. You become a character in the book, uh, yeah. a real character, of course. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, but it's more Mickey's story than it is mine, you know. Oh, I mean, if I, mean, I was, you're... yeah, if I was going to write a book on Joey Ramone, I wouldn't do it like like Mickey did. Um, but I think Mickey Mickey really wanted to, and I, I think he also wanted to write a book that, even if you didn't know who the Ramones were, like your daughter. Mm-hmm. You'd still be interested in it. 
you know, that it would still be compelling enough to read. Yeah, I think you guys absolutely succeeded in that. Um, uh, Do you think uh, Mickey Mickey accomplished what he wanted to by writing this book? Did he? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. I'm really proud of him, Mm. you know. And I think he articulated the best he could. What you said, like, why did you keep writing? I mean, it seems obvious now. Why do you keep writing songs? I mean, I would ask him that, too. Why, why keep writing songs when, when he's not giving you credit, you know? Mm-hmm. But Joey would always promise and promise you, you know, stuff. <laughs> you know? I mean, Joey was, Joey was, you know, a great fun guy you know and and he was the life of the party so you loved hanging around him you know mm-hmm. and he was his brother and you know they 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 really loved each other what what amazed me was when they were fighting they were always fighting in the same room you know <laughs> i mean of all the you know like i say in the book i think you know there were about 20 rock clubs in new york at that time but whenever they were fighting, they were always, you know, Mickey was either the bartender at Coney Island High and Joey was playing or, you know, I mean, it was that they were always in the same room. It was like who, these guys were so close that even when they were fighting, they couldn't, you know, like separate, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's what the problem was. Um, they were very they were very codependent on each other. As much as Mickey has gotten out of getting this book out, do you think he would have been... Uh, even more pleased if he had gotten it out like b- before his mom passed. Would you think that would have helped? Yeah, yeah. Well, she read. She 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 was reading stuff, and I, and I would call her, and she would say to me, "Oh, legs uh, uh, between the two of them, you know, I can never win, you know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> M- 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 Mickey always says I'm taking Joey's side. Joey always says I'm taking Mickey's side. You know. You know, it was very. You know, I I could I could sympathize with her. You know. Uh, you, uh, we made reference to your relationship with Joey. It came to an end, I think, because your professional career got in, got in the way of your uh, personal relationship. Is that a fair way to put it? Yeah, but I, Joey kind of had a way of wiping out the past and rewriting history, you know? And it's funny because I'm, I'm writing the, um, the liner notes for Animal Boy as we speak. And, mm-hmm. um, there, I guess Rhino is reissuing it, and there's a part in the interview where he says, "You know, those everybody says those early days were fun. Well, I wasn't having any fun, you know. And and now I'm having fun. Now I'm really having fun. And this is at a time when he's writing Mental Hell, and this is at a time when the, the Ramones' career, you know, Zip, Zippy the TV chimp who appeared on the cover of Animal Boy goes on to become the monkey cam on David Letterman and you know, has worldwide fame while the Ramones, you know, remain in obscurity. I mean, people forget that the Ramones, no one wanted, no one wrote about the Ramones in the 80s. No one cared about the Ramones. No one, no one, no one, except for a a small group of of people in clubs who went and and bought their T-shirts and, you know, loved them. But they really weren't. I mean, now when you, you say the Ramones, it's like they're this American, great American institution. But at the time, they were anything but that, mm-hmm. you know. So you, you got to put it in a, a historical context, too, of the times, you know. And then bringing this back around to the more personal, your relationship with Joey, uh, you were you were kind of surprised that he took offense at, at uh, the story. I think it was in Spin. Was, was that the point? Yeah, but he had he had also done um, I'd also done uh, Joey Ramone interviews P as a door with him too, so he right. couldn't be that, that mad at me. Um, Joey never liked anything that was written about him, and plus he never read the entire thing. He just read it out of context, you know, the part about him, you know. Mm-hmm. But so and and whenever you wrote something about Joey, you know he would hate it, but it was always the least offensive thing that you would think that he 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 would be offended by and i think i think in that spin piece what he was offended we didn't want to say we didn't want to write about Linda at all you know that was we we, we didn't want to expose that or get into that so we said that um joey wanted to have a hit and johnny didn't care and i think that's what he was offended by in that article i mean they were, they were always unhappy with whatever you wrote you know so you could never win with the ramones you know 
Right. I mean, they were really, really, you know, difficult, <laughs> you know, to to have a professional relationship with, you know. Did, did it affect you, though, personally, when he kind of cut you off? Well, I kind of walked away. I, I didn't pursue our friendship. I just said, you know what, I, and I also was getting sober at that time, and Joey was still drinking, and and you know, being carried off of airplanes and stuff. And I, I, it, it had gotten too ugly. And I knew, I knew what would happen if I went back and we'd be sitting around sometime and he'd say, uh, Hey legs, you can tell me what happened between you and Cindy. You come on, come on, come on. Yeah. You can tell me, you know, and I, and, you know, I just didn't want to have one more of those conversations. Mm-hmm. What I'm referring to is that Joey said, that I had slept with one of his girlfriends, mm-hmm. who I'd been in the same room with maybe three times in my life, maybe tw- maybe two times in my life, you know. And it was years, years, and years after that that he got it in his head that I had. And once Joey got it in his head and believed, and there, there was actually two girls that we had to, uh, ended up sharing as girlfriends, but he never complained about that. But I had never slept with the one that he did accuse me of. And it, it took me years to realize that it was his his paranoia, paranoid schizophrenia um, kicking in, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I didn't real, I, You know, when you asked me before um, when um, what I, 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 uh, I might have learned that I hadn't known and that was that Joey was hearing voices. I didn't know. I didn't realize that his his mental disability was so acute, mm-hmm. and that that was kind of a shock. That that he really didn't. I mean, that that's actually what killed him, because they were about to announce that his lymphoma was in remission, and what happened was on um, I think it was either New Year's Day. He went up and he had not touched his chiropractor's door or stepped off the curb. Whatever the OCD compulsion was, he had to go back and uh, step off the curb or touch the door. He had, he had certain um, machinations that he had to do, uh, you know, voices that would tell him that he had to do things and that he had done them wrong. And so he went up to his chiropractor in Midtown Manhattan from his apartment on 9th Street and did whatever he did. And then he went back, and the voices told him that he'd done it wrong. So he went back to his chiropractor for a second time, and that's when he slipped on the ice and broke his hip. And um, and because he was on all these uh, lymphoma or cancer drugs, they made his bones very brittle. And that's that's the, and once you break a leg or something, and you're on these things, uh, on these medications. Uh, I think it's very hard to heal from, and that led to him dying. And Legs, does this book now exhaust your vast vault of Ramon stories, research, and interviews, or do you still have enough to? Um, cobble, oh no, I have. Uh, I have. No, there's no, there's great stories that didn't make it into the book. You know, like uh, Bob Dylan <laughs> in Japan. You know, uh, Joey. You know, at, they're at a meet and greet, and Bob walks in the room and spots Joey and goes right up to him and goes, hey, Joey, how are you doing? You know, and it's like, you know, I don't think Joey realized how famous he was, you know? <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that, that's, that, you know, and that Bob would relate to him, you know, and that he'd probably been listening, you know, because he had kids, and they probably all grew up listening to the Ramones, you know? Um, right. You know, like, I don't think, you know, because Joey, you know, when you're touring 300 days out of the year, you, you really don't, and that's what they did for 22 years, you know? Mm. I mean, they just toured and toured and toured. I don't think you're really thinking like, gee, am I, or, you know, and, and they weren't, you know, uh, if, they, if they were playing outside of America, they were playing big clubs and big, big stadiums, but not in the United States, and, and that's where they thought real success lay, but they didn't realize, you know, that they were worldwide rock and roll stars, you know? Mm. Well, um, I, this this is a very fast uh, half hour. I uh, I'm really glad we got to talk, and I want to tell everybody that you can find uh, Legs McNeil's books, 
well, of course, this one was with uh, Mickey Lee. Uh, Mickey Lee. I, this, Mickey Lee. Uh, I slept with Joey Ramone, but also uh, by legs. Uh, Please kill me. The uncensored with Jillian with, huh? with Jillian McCain. And the other Hollywood the other, with with Jennifer Osborne and Peter Pavia. There you go. And they yeah. are available for sale at great bookstores everywhere, or you can find them at mrmedia.com. And you can also find Legs, if you like, on Facebook. I hope that wasn't a secret. Um. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Oh, although like, these, peop- these people keep want to friend me, and I've reached my friend limit, so I started an official Legs McNeil friend page, but no one goes there. They all keep – and I post the same stuff on both sites. So I, 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 I don't understand. And it's like – as of today, it's, there's 700 friend requests, and I've already reached my 5,000 limit. So I don't know what to do, Mr. Media. You might have to help me out here. Actually, I'm right behind you on that. I'm, I'm, I'm closing in on 4,600, and I don't really understand. I, I thought maybe it was an automated system. I guess it's not. I, I, can't, I can't answer that. Yeah. Huh. Um, you figure it out, and I'm going to come to you for that answer. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, sure. Listen, Legs, uh, always a pleasure to talk to you. Always uh, great to talk to you, Mr. Media. And I hope I hope book. I could clarify some of your um, your questions. Of course. If, oh. if I didn't have questions, uh, there'd be no reason for us to talk, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Listen, Happy New Year. Come back and talk very soon, okay? Okay. Happy New Year to you, too. All right. Take care, Legs. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And, folks, you can uh, subscribe to Mr. Media on uh, iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews uh, from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman or facebook.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with me. Thanks for listening, everybody.